Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com Standard Open in Indianapolis, part of the SCG Tour. I'm Nick Miller alongside Kent Ketter. How are you doing, sir? Good, good. No stranger to the sideboard here. I and like with it here. standard, you know, getting ready to rotate, this is the last open mm -hmm. with Cons of Tarkir, mm -hmm. with Fate Reforged. We're looking for some cool decks, and you brought one to the table a Mono Road Eldrazi deck, which is a sort of a mid rangey aggressive deck, but. Yep. But let's be honest here, you're playing the new Stormbutt Dragon. Yes, I am. Uh, yes, which I Which is am. Reality Smasher, of yeah. course. Uh, but you've known to flap your wings on occasion with Stormbutt yeah. Dragon. Reality Smasher doesn't have wings, but uh, that was the exact mindset uh, going into the tournament. Um, everything's really powerful. It's, it's standard. This has been around for a while. It's a huge block or a huge pool of cards. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody knows the good decks. I mean, Rally's great. Abzan, Mardu, Jeskai, all that stuff are fantastic. Uh, we actually had found a Martyr Green list, referring to Lotus, and the Jeskai Black list going into this that we liked. But I literally said, I don't really care. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do this because I think it'll be fun. Um, and it's, it's also quite powerful. It's very gonna, powerful. Gonna tape some wings to the back of this Reality Smasher and yeah. start turning some things sideways. That is the hope. So you, the... we've got this Eldrazi sort of artifact theme uh, mm -hmm. deck here. You got Hangerback Walker, in conjunction with Hedron Crawler, Vile Aggregate, Aggregate, a card we saw in the modern builds that kind of yep. wanted to get aggressive, Thought Knots here, of course, and then Reality Smasher as your, your colorless theme. But then you mm -hmm. also have this artifact theme of Thopped Engineer, Pia, and Kira Nalar, which we saw in like the Black Red Dragons yep. deck. And then as well, Chandra, the best planeswalker outside of Jace right now, yeah. uh, looks very good. You know, take us through what this deck does and how you plan to do it. So, uh, first off, the deck is based around Hedron Crawler. It's the best card in the deck. Kill it if you see it. If you're playing the deck and your opener doesn't have it, you should probably start thinking about a mulligan. Um, that, that's how important the card is. Uh, but from there, just like Nick said, uh, two major themes. Um, you have the Eldrazi with the best card at each converted mana cost, in my opinion, for available for Eldrazi. Vile Aggregate, Thought Not Seer, and Reality Smasher. Um, Vile Aggregate and Smasher, definite four of. Smasher is kind of the glue that holds your whole concept together. We're trying to be better at each spot on the curve, but having a Haste Trampler lets you actually turn the corner and, and start to win games. You know, after you've cast one or two medium guys, Smasher usually pushes your aggregate into like the three power range, um, and you just run away from it there. Uh, Thought Knots here is the three of was a specific choice that there are enough decks that dump their hand in a rapid enough fashion. And it might not kill everything. Um, the, fourth one, the fourth one's in the board. But sure. I know that that's the one area where I would have to say my deck building might have been a little lazy in that I didn't figure out the, the correct card to cut to play my four Thought Knots here. Um, but those are the Eldrazi. They're fine. They're neat. The really cool part about this deck, and Red Black Dragons has sh showcased the power of this, but Thopter Engineer is probably one of the best uncommons that people aren't like crowing about in, in Origins, uh, especially with P&K and Hangerback Walker. Um, small interaction, won me a bunch of games on Magic Online, but hanger back, pump it, sack it to P and K, put a bunch of tokens in play, they now have haste. That also pumps up your vile aggregate. Right. I know that sounds kind of like a convoluted line, but P and K activation shooting something normally makes it where they're going to block for a trade, or they just lose their blocker, and you run away from it uh, from there. Um, right. Those are the creature themes. You there. got that three card package, which yep. we, of course we've seen before, but you also get to include Ruins of Orin Reef, oh, yeah. which is like a nice little fourth piece of the combo yeah. that kind of also works with the other parts of your deck as well, outside of the artifact yeah. sub theme. And as the deck has no one drops, um, I mean, it's, it's free on the one. Uh, with Hedron Crawler, you have a few sequences where you're also fine to play it on the two or the three, and it doesn't really throw you off. It's definitely. Each card individually is, is pretty powerful. Um, but it's the small interactions between them that really push them over the top. I originally had started with the blue Eldrazi deck, and it seemed fine, but not really powerful. Went to blue-red because it had a monster's theme. It really felt mm -hmm. like it pushed the Reality Smasher edge, but it was just lacking something. You know, into the format, the, the only thing that all the decks have is just raw power. The best cards possible and the best configurations. So I felt like this, the Eldrazi deck, if I wanted to play it, need to sport something beyond just for Reality Smasher. And that's where uh, Chandra the Flamecaller comes in. Right. This card has just become all over the place, an all-star in so many decks. Yep. All of the abilities are relevant, and that's something that, you know, when you look at a Planeswalker, that has to be the case to be as good as it is in yep. Standard, and Chandra does everything you want in this deck. Mm -hmm. um, biggest thing with being a four of is you get to use two of them in conjunction to be a Rathagod. 
You have the first one, you minus it as much as you need to, um, you know, all of the counters. You play your second one and minus it for that additional damage you need, or you make two, three ones. Mm -hmm. um, you have still used all the loyalty on the old Chandra, which feels, you know, as mana efficient as you can be, and then you have a fresh one that uh, is putting six, six power worth of attackers in play. And the zero ability is fantastic. <laughs> it is fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. It's usually not correct to use it, but it gives you an ability to cash in, you know, in the matchups where Roast isn't as good, or, you know, maybe you draw a late Crawler or a late Thought Not Seer and you're just, you know, not really feeling it. You get to pitch them to Chandra. It's pretty nice. I've also seen, you know, the decks that do have access to multiple Chandras just get to do the make two three runs, play another Chandra, make, make two, two more yep. three ones. Yeah. You're attacking for a lot of damage out of nowhere. Yeah, uh, Chandra's just a really versatile one. Uh, I, I will be happy to explore that card you know, as long as it's available in standard. Um, I would like to see maybe another ramp effect that can really push it into, into play earlier. But uh, in this deck, I think it is the exact top of the curve. I'm willing to play four six drops with 25 lands, no Hedron Archives. Um, and I, it's a concession I'm willing to make because when it does resolve, it immediately impacts the board one way or the other. Multiples are just fine and the zero can pitch them. You know, sure. if you're really not gonna use them, you can, you can make use of those. Uh, but the rest of the cards are your, your standard, you know, removal spells, right. need a few of those. Um, Roast, Spatial Contortion, filling in the gaps where you need to kill Siege Rhinos yep. and things of that nature. Uh, other lands we want to talk about, we already mentioned the Reef here, but you also have Tomb of the Spirit Dragon, yeah. uh, nice colorless theme card here, and yeah. then Foundry of the Councils as well, as lo what looks to be just like a great late game card that also powers out your Eldrazi. Yeah, uh, Found or Tomb of the Spirit Dragon lets you elongate the game, which I do think favors the Eldrazi deck. Uh, you know, anything aggressive that you can push into turns, you know, six and seven, you're going to start getting to use, you know, your second Chandras and stuff like that. Um, also, there are some board states that you get into, you know, with five plus uh, colorless permanents that they're just not going to race you. Yeah. Um, then Foundry of the Councils is just, it's probably one of the reasons, it, it, it is one of the reasons to be an Eldrazi. Uh, it's even better when you get to be colorless and you're not having to mess with as many, you know, you don't need both blue and red or red, red, blue, blue type of stuff. Right. Um, with only one color and then colorless. Yep. Yep. I, Foundry of the Councils is, is great and that's a card as well in the new set. I would encourage people to... Uh, to take a look at, you know, see what it can do for you. Um, I mean, obviously, P&K loves to have more fodder. Yeah, so. I was going to say, you know, we haven't seen a lot of decks jump on the Foundry yet. There are so many options at the colorless land spot, you mm -hmm. know, ones that you're not even using. You know, you could use the Corrupted ones. You could yeah. use the Crumbling Vestige. You mm -hmm. can just go anywhere. Plus, you already have, you know, your Pain Lands that can also give you colorless mm -hmm. mana. So, all right. Deck looks great. Let's move on to the sideboard where you got a lot more that, you know, you're kind of filling in the gaps of what yeah. your deck has. You have more removal spells, you know, more Rose, more Thought Knots here, you know, got some Arc Lightnings. But you've got some sweet cards to talk about as well. Outpost Siege just gives you that kind of grindy mid range matchup. Yep. Card um, advantage. With Utter End almost non existent, uh, your Jeskai Black, your Painful Truce uh, mid range decks just don't really interact with it. Uh, you get to run away with the game there. And the Dragon's Mode does have some text. Um, you can go well, there's outpost, definitely text on the card. Right, right, yeah, tons of it. But the Dragon's Mode, you can go Outpost Siege Dragon Chandra minus ping. Like, it lets you take a Chandra activation for three, keeping your four toughness creatures alive, pinging their four toughness creatures. It, it is surprisingly efficient at what it does, but the base mode of just flipping a card every turn is exactly what you want. Bunch of Eldrazi Obligators, kind of just other big creatures across the board. You just mm -hmm. want to take them and try to the, win right there. The Mirror and the Ramp matchup. Um, ramp is definitely a matchup I feel is favorable with the haste and you know some of the reach offered by PNK, but they usually resolve one big guy and you get to obligator it and you know hopefully kill him there on the spot. Uh, he's obligator is a card that for the week I had played with four on Magic Online and I boarded it in a lot and I loved it, but concessions had to be made to fit in other slots, so I, I cut one. Another card that I think. Once some of the really powerful uh, cards from cons leave, I think Obligator is going to slide right into being a, uh, a role player. Some of the other cards so. you made room for, Double Ash Cloud Phoenix, mm -hmm. and then Oblivion Sower as well. We've seen this yeah. kind of pop up in all of the Eldrazi decks from all the formats. You, have, of course, have played Eldrazi three opens in a row, three different formats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was hoping uh, Philly was going to go better because I wanted, you know, to be able to beat the Eldrazi King and, you know, get a crown and have all the fun things that, uh, you know, Eldrazi, they, they give you this after you win. They send you a crown from the Eldrazi. I promise you. Um, that might not be true. They, I, we'll find out. Um, yeah, Ashcloud Phoenix, it's, it's surprisingly uh, 
resilient against, well, everything, but it really interacts well with Thunderbreak Regent, which is still a card people love. And at the Open Series, you have to be aware of cards that people love versus cards that are necessarily, you know, insanely good. Um, and additionally, against Rally, it's a 4-1 flyer that just attacks, attacks, attacks. If they happen to cut it, you get it right back. And that's, that's where you need to be against Rally, because uh, the matchup is medium fine. All right. Medium fine. You can get your stakes like that yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh, jeez. All right, well, the sideboard looks pretty good. The main deck looks good. You've played a couple of leagues online. Yeah. Had decent success. Enough to put down the Just Guy kind of aggro deck that you and Team Load has played a few yeah. opens ago. But how do you feel the deck looks? I am excited with what it does. I think I'm going to get a few game wins today off of my opponents, just not being aware of all the, the interesting interactions available. Um, and I think, just think it's going to be a lot of fun. Multiple Reality Smashers is just as good as multiple Storm Breath Dragons. Uh, close, not quite just as good, but it's very, it's very, very close. And uh, just hoping to have some fun and uh, you know maybe play against rally opponents who don't go into complete degeneracy of like drawing twelve extra cards and rallying you know two times in a match. All right. Well, Kent, I wish you the best of luck. Thank Thanks you. for joining me here in the sideboard. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Indianapolis.